All right, in this video, we're going to go over how to make a uh, wall section that has two openings, specifically a door opening and a window opening. And you should have access right now to either a PDF or a hard copy of something that looks very similar to this. So this is what we're going to recreate uh, in this video. And I want you to follow along just to get some more practice with how wall assemblies go together, as well as uh, getting a refresher on AutoCAD. All right, so to start this off, I want you to use the same um, file that we used the other day um, that I have on my screen now. You can use the one that you've completed, or you can re-download it off your Google Classroom, whichever you choose. All right, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and start. This is just a fresh template. If you're using the one that you saved, that's fine as well. So the first thing that I want to do is, let's bring my picture back over, is I kind of want to make my, my rectangle here with my sole plate and my double top plate, and then my two end studs. All right, I wanna make a nice rectangle to start off with. All right, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna bring this over to my other screen. And the first thing I need to do in AutoCAD is make sure that I'm using the proper layer. All right, so um, I wanna use the same object layer, this green layer. When I click on it, it is in fact object. So I'm gonna say, uh, I'm gonna make that my current layer. All right, so my, my current layer is on object, and to do that, I just click on current layer, or make current, and then click on the layer that I want to make current, and it makes it current. Another way that I can do that is I can simply just go up into my uh, layer manager here and click on object, and it changes it over. All right, so uh, again, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to start with my sole plate and my double top plates. So this is all going to be two by four construction. So I need uh, three of them, three uh, framing members at 11 feet, five inches, two for the top plates and one for the sole plate. So I'm going to start that. I'm just going to drag over here and I'm going to use polylines for everything because it makes it a lot easier to, to navigate and copy members over. So I'm going to type in PL for polyline. I'm going to start my polyline. I'm going to type in 11 feet five inches and hit enter. I'm going to come down 1.5 inches, which is the thickness of my two by four. And I come to the left 11 feet, five inches. And there's two different ways I can close up this polyline. I can click on my starting location or I can type in CL on my keyboard for close and it closes up my polyline. All right. So there's one framing member. And now uh, I know that um, let's say that this is my top plate. I know that I need two of them. So I'm going to type in CO for a copy select my polyline or my framing member click on the top corner here with my o snap on and there's my double top plate so now i need to make my sole plate i bring my my uh image back over i know that my sole plate needs to be uh, from the top of my top plate to the bottom of my sole plate it needs to be eight feet so i'm going to use some reference lines here there's more than one way to do this but uh, i use reference lines quite a bit so i'm just going to type l for line i'm going to drag it over here I'm going to drop it down eight feet, rip it over here, and I'm just going to use that as a guide to let me know where eight feet is. All right, so I'm just going to double check my distance by typing DI for distance. It's just a quick way to check your, your length of something as opposed to using an actual dimension. dimension. So from the top of my top plate to the bottom of my sole plate should be eight feet. And as we can see right there, we have eight feet. So I'm happy with that. All right, so the next thing that I want to do is I want to put in these studs here. So the stud on the left and the stud on the right, again, just to make my rectangle. So I'm going to bring this back over. I'm again going to go on to um, use a, uh, my polyline command, PL. I'm going to start in the top here, connect the dots, 1.5 inches to the right, bring it back up, and then hit CL to close up my polyline. And there's my stud. So you notice I really didn't care how long this was. I didn't type in any specific dimension to get from here to here. I just know that my overall wall needs to be eight feet from the top to the bottom. So everything else is just fill in. Now I want to make my stud on the right hand side. So I can do the same thing with a polyline, but the stud's going to be the same size. So I'm just going to copy it over. So CO for copy, select the corner of my stud, select the corner of my top plate, and I'm good to go. All right, so there is my nice rectangle. So the next thing I want to do is I want to put in my rough openings for my windows and my doors. So I think first I'm going to select, uh, I'm going to start with the rough opening for uh, my window. All right, so it's 26 by 38, and it's also 2 feet 8 inches on center off of my right-hand framing member. All right, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to click back over here. I'm going to again hit PL. 
And I'm just going to make a rectangle that is 26 by 38. 26. Close that up. All right, now I'm going to center this where it needs to be. So again, I'm going to use some reference lines because I know I need to come off the right-hand side of the stud. And I need to go over 2 feet 8 inches to the left to find my center line. There's my center line. I'm then going to move my opening. M for move. Click on my midpoint. Drop it right there. Good to go. Delete my reference lines. Okay. Now I know it doesn't show this on your paper, um, but I want the top of the window opening to be six foot five off the bottom of the sole plate. All right. So again, I'm going to use some more reference lines. So I'm going to pull a line off the bottom of my sole plate, go up six feet, five inches. That's where the top of my opening should be. So I'm just going to shift it, snap it up there. Perfect. That's where it's got to go. All right, so now I have my window opening, my 26 by 38 rough opening right where it needs to be. Uh, now, since I'm in the, the rough opening frame of mind, I'm going to go ahead and throw in uh, my 32 by 82 rough opening for the door. Okay, so I'm going to make another ply line that's 32 by 82, and I'm going to center that at 1 foot 11 and a half inches off my left side. All right, so let's do this. I'm going to start with another ply line, and I'm going to call that... 32 width-wise, 82 height-wise, 32. All right, and now if I look over here, I want the bottom of my rough opening to be right at the bottom of my sill plate. Okay, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pile line, I'm going to move it, shift it over there. And now I need the center line of this rough opening to be at 1 foot 11 and a half inches. So again, I'm just going to use another reference line. So I'm going to go 1 foot 11.5 inches. And there's the center of my door. I'm going to move that over, use my O-snaps. All right, and let me just double check my dimensions here. So I'm going to go DI. It is 2 feet 8, which is 32. 6 foot 10, which is 82. Perfect. Okay. So now I have my rough openings in there. Right now I need to find a way to support these openings. Right. So if I bring my image back over, you'll see that my rough opening is framed out by trimmers and, 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 and a little cripple header and sill plates and whatnot. So need, now I need to start putting those framing members in. And there's many different ways that we can start doing this. Um, but I'm going to start with my bottom uh, 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 sill plate and my cripple um, studs. All right, so let me bring this back over. Now to do that, um, there's a couple different ways that I can do it. Right, But the way that I'm going to do it is I'm going to do another uh, PL for polyline, and I come down, and I'm going to do a line at 1.5, and come over. I know my sill plate has to be the width of my rough opening. So there's my sill plate. Good to go. Now I'm going to put in my cripple studs that support my trim plate, or my sill plate, excuse me. I'm going to draw a line down, 1.5 over. Come back up and close that. And I know that I need two of them, so I'm just going to copy this over. All right, and now that I, while I'm doing my, my cripple studs here, I know that I need to be 16 on center. All right, so the um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check to see how wide this is. So it's 1 feet 11. So here's the thing. I can, I can do it 16 on center, or um, to keep everything symmetrical, I'm just going to take another one of my um, cripple studs here. I'm going to put it right in the center because I know I'm still within my 16 on center requirements. All right, so I'm going to double check. I should have 14 and a half, at least 14 and a half, or no more than 14 and a half, I should say. So 10 foot 3. So we're good to go. We are less than 16 on center here. So this is good and strong. It's code compliant. All right, so the next thing that I need to do is I need to adjust for, let me bring my picture back over. So we have this stud here, we have this cripple stud, we have this cripple stud. Now let's go ahead and put in our trimmers because I know that I have to put in a cripple header here. All right, so again, I'm just going to start with these trimmer studs and start building my header assembly and my king studs. All right, so I'll bring this back over. So I know that I need a header. So again, there's, let's see how I want to do this. So I think I want to do like this. I'm going to go PL, I'm going to come over 
1.5 inches again. And I'm going to make, I know this is going to be a little large, but we'll, we'll learn something else here. So I'll just drop it there. Any old place, I'm going to go 1.5 over again. And make that stud. Now I know it's a little larger than it needs to be, but here's why I did that. Actually, I'm going to mirror this. So am I bring this over? And now I'm going to make my header. So I'm going to go PL. And I'm actually going to start on the corner of my opening. I'm going to come to the edge of my um, trimmer. I'm going to come up 1.5 inches. Over to the edge of this one. Come down 1.5 inches. Then I'm going to close it up. All right, so what that did is it gave me the outline of wh exactly how wide that header needs to be. So now I'm going to take these, this trimmer here, and I'm just going to use my grips, and I'm going to scooch it down so it's holding up my header. All right, so just give you a frame of reference. We have our header, header here, trimmer stud holding it up. Trimmer stud, trimmer stud. Okay, that's good. Now I want to put in my king stud just because it's easy. Now, again, there's a couple different ways I can do this. I can go ahead and I can redraw uh, another stud in there. I can copy this stud or this trimmer stud over. But I know that my king stud is a full-size stud, and I already have one right here. So I'm just going to copy this one. I type CO for copy. Put one there. And I'm going to mirror this. And there's another one there. So now I have my king stud, my trimmer stud, my cripple studs. And the last thing I want to do is I want to put some more cripple construction up top here. So I'm going to take um, another frame member. I'm going to go 1.5. Go to the top. Put one there. I'm going to copy it over here. And I know that this is more than 16 on center. So I'm going to take another one of these cripple studs. I'm going to copy it from the center of my stud and put it right in the center of my framing. All right, so let's see how we did. So we have our window opening. We have a header. We have three cripples on top. Bing, bang, boom. We have our sill with three cripples. Bing, bang, boom. We have two trimmers, and we have two king studs. That looks good. Okay, so now let's go frame up our door opening. Okay, so again, uh, I have my rough opening here, and I know the parts that make up my rough opening are going to be my trimmer studs here and here, and also my header, my cripple header construction. All right, so I'm going to do this a little differently this time than I did the window. So I'm going to go over here, and the first thing I'm going to start with is I'm going to start by making my header. Now, I know for my header that I'm going to have an inch and a half trimmer on either side. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to start here. I'm going to go 1.5 inches like that. And I'm going to come up another 1.5 inches. And I'm going to go to this, just to the edge here, so I have a reference. 1.5 again. 1.5 again. Close this up. And there is my header. All right, so now I'm going to draw in my trimmer. So PL. Now I'm just connecting the dots. So I know this is a 1.5 inch Framing member. There's a trimmer. Now I can copy this over or I can mirror it over. So I think I'll mirror it. All right, there's my trimmer. Now that I know that I need a king stud on either side, and I can immediately have a king stud right here. So I'm going to copy, put that right there, and I'm going to mirror that stud over. Oops, I mirror it in the right spot. Oh, I'm not, it's not mirroring because I'm not getting the center point. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to copy it. So let's copy this guy over. All right, there. And now I need to put in, let's just bring this over. I know I'm kind of zipping through this. But I also need to put in some cripple studs because this is a cripple header. All right, so to do that, again, I'm just going to zoom in. I'm going to do a polyline from the corner of this stud, go over 1.5 inches, come down to the top of my header. Back over my kink stud. Close that up. So there's one cripple stud. There's a second. And I'm going to center a third one right in the center of my header here. Okay, let's see how we did. 
to zoom in so we can see what's going on. Okay, so we have our rough opening, we have our header, we have two trimmers, king stud, three cripples up top, looks good. All right, so I'm going to bring this back over because the next thing we need to do now is we need to put in our remaining studs. So to do that, a couple different ways that we can do it, right? So when we could offset stuff right over, or if I really want to make sure that I'm 16 on center, I'm going to use some reference lines. I'm going to take my reference line, put it smack dab in the middle here, draw up, put one line at 16, copy that over at another 16, and that should be the center line of my remaining studs. So I'm going to copy this one over, copy, copy. Let's check, see how we look. Looks pretty good. All right. So now the last thing I want to do is I want to throw some dimensions on this. All right. So I'm going to type in DIM for dimension. And I can click on my bottom of my sole plate. Click on my top plate. That's going to be eight feet. All right. So now I want to take, uh, I'm going to do another dimension from, let's see, I need to go, oops, a little fast in the hands there, from overall width, 11 feet 5. All right. And then I can go through and do the rest of my dimensioning and add my, my tags and, and leaders and whatnot in there. All right. So, um, this, I know it's a pretty quick run through, but please feel free to pause the video, slow the video down. Um, and again, remember there's more than one way to use AutoCAD. So if you find a different way um, that you like to use commands, whether it's the drop downs or the, or the palette, um, please feel free to do so. Uh, but the overall goal is to get you mainly command based because that is one of the fastest ways to use AutoCAD. Uh, if you have any questions, please come on up and see me.